Elizabeth, welcome to Finance Fixer. You're 29 years old. You have $160,257.66 worth of debt. You make $9,800 a month and you spend $2,990 on bills and you have absolutely no investments and no cash in your bank account. How do you feel on a scale of one to 10 about your financial situation and why? I'm probably in the negative on that scale. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Um, I'm just overwhelmed. I've tried to make a budget multiple times. I just started a new job um, where I'm making double the income that I was making. So I'm ready to finally come up with a plan and get rid of this debt. Well, I love that you're taking that initiative. I love that you found a better paying job because that's a big part of getting out of debt. It's about getting as much money as you can coming in every month and then spending as little as possible so the rest can be thrown at your debt. And you have a lot of debt to throw this at. Yeah. The first part of your debt is roughly $20,000 of credit card debt. How did you get in the credit card debt? So I know a lot of people are probably like, oh my gosh, how does she have $20,000? She probably spends it on all this stupid stuff that she doesn't need. Um, a few years ago, my when I was an undergrad, my mom um, was incarcerated kind of suddenly. She was my main financial provider. Um, so I had no choice. I started working a couple of jobs, but I was making 10 or $11 an hour in my apartment. It was over $1,400 a month for rent. So if you add that up, it's not very much. So um, the majority of those credit cards are from um, living expenses from then. That sounds like a particularly brutal situation. The good news is that it likely is a one-time affair, right? You don't have an impulse spending problem. You're not abusing credit cards. You did what you had to do to survive. And I have a lot of respect for that. This isn't a situation where you should feel bad about the decision you made. You were stuck between a rock and a hard place. You made tough decisions. And now we just deal with the consequences of those tough decisions. I want to learn a little bit more about that personal loan for a little over $8,000. Yeah. So I actually did that to consolidate some other credit cards. Um, I did that a couple of years ago. So I consolidated. So I had even more credit card debt. Um, I consolidated a bunch of my high interest cards to try to make a dent in them. Um, so that's what that's from. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the past. You have this personal loan over $8,000. You consolidated credit cards, meaning you took a shot at getting out of this situation. What happened? Yeah, so it was another issue with finances. I had to use the credit, some credit cards to pay my bills again. Is it the same issue or just other emergencies came up? Other emergencies, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the tough parts once you start falling behind because yes. when you're behind, you're struggling to pay your bills, yes. you're struggling to get ahead, and life always throws emergencies your way. Mm -hmm. You have no control over it. You don't know what the emergency will be. You can never really prepare for it other than setting cash aside for an emergency fund, yeah. which you can do if you're in good financial shape, but it's very difficult to do when you're in bad financial shape. You know emergencies are coming. You don't have an emergency fund, which means you get stuck with credit cards. You're getting off track. And it just makes a bad situation that much worse. Yeah, and I also have horses, and I don't know if you know this about horses or not, but they they try to kill themselves on the on the regular. So uh, an emergency fund for vet bills would be great. <laughs> and that's the power of an emergency fund. That's the power of getting into a good financial situation because stuff happens in life. Yeah. In this case, horses don't like existing. <laughs> and having money to deal with the vet bills is going to make your life so much better. Yeah. And I want you to get there. And I know you can get there. So keep your eye on the prize, because as you might expect of $168,000 worth of debt, you have a journey ahead of you. And as long as you walk the journey, I'm a firm believer you can become very rich in your lifetime. You're 29 years old and you're making a stellar income. If you end up being poor while you're older, to be blunt, it's a choice. Yeah. Your finances look bad on paper, but you are in a situation where they can become phenomenal within five years. Let's go through a little bit more of the debt situation before we talk about the income and what it means for getting through this debt. Tell me about how all these student loans came to be. So I have two undergraduate degrees. Um, actually, I would have even more student debt. I had a, my mom did a prepaid college tuition fund for me. Um, so she put money away every month until I turned 18 from when I was born. So I actually had $30,000 of a prepaid college tuition, but I screwed up. So my first two years, I was on a college rodeo team. Um, and then all the stuff happened with my mom where she uh, was incarcerated. So I had to move back home and I transferred. When I transferred to um, the University of Tennessee, a lot of my credits from my first school didn't transfer over. 
So I had to retake classes. And so essentially I, I wasted a lot of that money, which I didn't know I was going to have to transfer back. So there's nothing I can do about it now, but um, my first degree is from UT and it's in animal science, which I do not use at all. So I um, went to UT and did their accelerated nursing program. So you have to already have a bachelor's and it's an 11 month program to get a bachelor's in nursing. And I am working in nursing currently. Sounds like that whole ordeal of your mom continues to plague your finances. This is issues of college. This is issues of credit cards, but it's all one time. So once you get ahead, you're going to stay ahead. Once you get ahead and get to the path of becoming wealthy, you're going to be on that path going forward. I'm not really worried about bad financial behavior from what you've said so far. The last part of your overall debt situation is a truck. Tell me about the truck. <laughs> so I have horses. I had, I was driving a little car. It was almost paid for and the transmission went out and the cost of it would be more than what the car was worth. Um, so I bought the truck in order to haul my horses because I pull a horse trailer because I compete um, in barrel racing. And then obviously hauling hay, hauling horse feed, probably not, I don't need as nice of a truck as I have, but having a truck is a necessity when you have horses and property to manage. So I'm fine with the fact that you have a truck. It was a mistake to not get a well-used truck because it's adding probably an additional 15 to 20K to your debt situation, which doesn't need to be there. By getting a new truck, a more expensive truck, you extend that risk period, the period where you don't really own the vehicle. So if you miss a payment, all of a sudden the tow truck squad starts looking for you. And maybe while you're nursing and you have your vehicle parked somewhere, maybe you're grocery shopping, all of a sudden you come out, your truck's gone. Car debt, in this case, truck debt, is very different than credit card debt. Credit card debt, they're all worried about you. It's not secured debt. If you go bankrupt or fall behind, the credit card companies don't have a lot of options. They can sue you to try to garnish your wages. But in most cases, they're forced to sell it to debt collectors who will pay pennies on the dollar for it. And the credit card company gets a solid loss. But the car companies, they just take the car. They have a lot less risk. In this case, it's probably not a very fixable situation. You could feel free to look into selling it and buying a used car and what that would look like. Unfortunately, the interest rate would be much higher. You have a 4.69% interest rate right now. I would be surprised if your credit's particularly good, given your situation. So a potential car loan could be much more expensive. It's worth potentially exploring. I don't think, unfortunately, selling a truck and buying a used one in this case will make a huge dent here. I will say it was used. I didn't buy it new. But it was during that time in COVID where everybody, where trucks were in short uh, short supply because there was a chip manufacturing issue or something. So everything, of course, that's when my transition went out in my car. You have 34000 still on a used truck. I know. That's insane. And I put $5,000 down. Brutal. Ultimately, since it's used, yeah, exchanging it has a very low chance of actually saving you significant money maybe worth looking into just to see if you can find the way to shave off 10k now that that chip shortage is gone and car prices are still wild but not quite as wild with that said given that you paid that much for a used vehicle i'm not liking the odds of the exchange yeah. of being a quick way to eliminate ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars of your debt let's talk about tackling the debt here there are two different debt strategies available. There's the debt avalanche and the debt snowball. Avalanche is mathematically the most efficient way to go through your debt situation. You go highest interest rate down and you just pay it off that way. In short, you're returning money to the creditors who are charging the most for borrowing it. The alternative strategy is what's called the debt snowball. You go from the lowest bounce possible all the way up to the highest bounce. The idea is you're getting quick wins and you're also simplifying your financial situation. In your particular case, I would encourage you to do the debt snowball. Okay. One of the big issues for me when I look at your uh, plain talk money debt eliminator, which outlines all of your different debts, your income, your bills. What I hate about the debt section there is there's so many things going on. I know. I can't keep up. It's so much. It's infuriating. I can't imagine getting emails from Capital One, yes. Credit One, Discover, Care Credit, TSC, One Main, Target, Bank of America, your personal loan, whatever institution gave you that. You have a vet bill I haven't even mentioned. Yeah. Getting an, in, uh, but you, I'm sure they're sending you emails. Sally Mae, a truck, and then you have federal student loans. You have this huge stack of creditors, and I just think that's so overwhelming. Yeah, it is so overwhelming. That's why. 
so I'm in this position too because it's so hard for me to look at all the numbers. I will say your um, Excel sheet that I used was very, very helpful. Thank you so much. And it is available to everybody on plaintalkmoney.com under the free tools section. Looking at your income and bills, you're getting left with $6,810 a month to throw at the debt. That first month, you can wipe out four to five credit cards immediately. And you can pay them off, close it down and move on. And you rinse and repeat that for three or four months, we can get this down to just a handful of creditors, a handful of institutions to worry about. And at a rate of putting basically $7,000 into your credit cards, even with the absurd interest rate that your credit cards are charging you, all of them are above average. The average is around 20% for new credit cards. Your lowest is a little over 22%, which is just brutal, just brutal and, and absolute absolute financial crime. Like the whole system is trying to make sure that you just keep paying money to these parasitic banks and credit card companies. It's genuinely awful what they're doing to you. The total credit card debt, excluding the personal loan, is a little over $20,000 with the personal loan, which was that consolidation, puts us, let's just call it about $30,000. But at $7,000 a month, even with interest, that is all conquerable by the end of this year. Cool, that makes me feel a lot better. You should feel better. How do you think you're gonna feel when you have no credit card debt? Um, Like I just won the lottery. <laughs> uh-huh. Because I'll have to- Six <laughs> months. Yeah. Six months you can feel like you won the lottery. I have most of them on auto pay, but it's still a lot having to keep up with them because some of them, they don't do, um, the, if my minimum payment goes up, they don't just change it automatically. I have to pay attention to it because it, and then they'll charge me a late fee because I didn't pay the full amount. Yeah, because they're trying to screw you. Credit card company's only goal is to get you to where you're barely afloat, but you're still afloat. They don't mind hitting you with late fees, making it difficult to pay back uh, the money that you owe them. They actually like that. As long as they keep you not quite drowning, but close to it, they're making good money off of you. They are genuine parasites. If you die, they're in trouble. But if you haven't died, they're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Your goal by the end of June will be to wipe out the target card. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Your number one priority is the credit one. That should be paid off and closed this month. Number two is target. That should be paid off and closed this month. Number three, looking at your balances, is discover. That should be paid and closed off this month. Number four, it, looking at your balances, TSC at $1,379. Pay it off, close it. By the end of this month, at least four should be eliminated. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, it should sound good. Think of how much nicer this is going to look. And then the month after that, you're going to another three or four are going to pop off. I mean, this is going to be pretty quick. Yeah. Now, for all your debts, you're paying the minimum. You do not want to fall behind on all these credit cards. You're still paying the minimum. You're still paying your truck payment. You're paying what you own for student loans. And then every extra dollar you have, you just chuck it at whatever the lowest balance is. And we're going to clean this up. And by the end of this year, you're going to feel like you won the lottery. By the end of this year, your credit card debt should be eliminated and you're back on the path to becoming a multimillionaire. You're back on the path that you deserved to be on, right? Life threw you some brutal emergencies. You had to pay bills of a credit card. You didn't have a choice. Your mother was incarcerated. You know, say over that. Life was not kind to you. Yeah. But you deserve to be rich. You deserve to be a multimillionaire several times over. You're age 29. You have a lot of debt, but you can get out of the situation. Now, to do all of that, to pay off these credit cards and then get through the student debt, get through the vet bill, get through the truck, because you're going to be really focused this whole way through. It's not just going to stop after the credit cards are done. You got to clean it all up. I want you to be debt free within four years, if not sooner. So let's look at your income and bills. So tell me a bit about your current job. You're making $9,800. Mm -hmm. What is your income situation like? So I am currently working a nursing job. It's technically a seasonal position. So what that means is I just don't get benefits. So I, I pay for private insurance anyways. Um, so I don't get retirement or anything like that. But I also, I didn't include it in my income, um, which I probably should have, but my hours just vary. I have two other nursing jobs that I just work random hours sometimes. Um, I have the income available. It's just, I've always struggled with how to set it up to use it to, the, to my advantage. First, I love that you have additional work. The more work and hours you get, especially uh, because you do skilled work, you get paid really well, take every hour you can get. For this next half year, 
the faster you get for the debt, the better. The truck is at 4.69%. If it takes us a while to pay it back, fine. But your credit cards are all above 20%. The longer that's ticking, the more brutal the interest is getting. Because interest compounds, right? You, they charge you interest, and then that interest starts producing its own interest, right? We're trying to fight against that tide. Compound interest is your enemy in this case. Once we're done with the debt and you start investing in the stock market and really building passive income, then it's your best friend. Right now, it's your worst enemy. The faster we get for the credit card debt, the faster your situation goes from, wow, this is dismal, it's really brutal, you're getting charged in interest thousands upon thousands of dollars every year from these credit cards. You'd still have a lot of debt after that's gone, but it's like truck debt, student loans, a vet bill. That's all much more manageable. To me, the fact that you're working so hard makes me so confident you can get out of this situation. Yeah, that makes me feel better. Yeah, I really I really want to get out of it and just get everything in order. I didn't really have people to to teach, to show me, you know, how my dad, he's okay with money. And he just tells me, just don't spend that. Don't spend this. But my mom, she has no retirement. She has, she gets social security, but I mean, she worked in the medical field her whole life too, but she has no retirement. She's still working. She's 67 and I, she doesn't have an emergency fund really. She still kind of lives paycheck to paycheck. So I just, I don't want to end up like that. Yeah. You deserve better. Everyone deserves better. I, I hate that we allow people to go down that route because probably along the way, there were opportunities to get ahead, mm -hmm. but we do not disseminate financial knowledge in the society. Yeah. We let advertisements teach people how it works. On TV, the lesson's always clear. If you take a credit card and swipe it, everybody's smiling. That's the one finance lesson we teach our people. And it's absurd, it's disgusting, it's immoral, but we do it anyways. Mm -hmm. If you stay focused, not only can you set yourself up for success, you can set up your future kids for success. You can set up their potential grandkids for success. Whereas you, we're on the receiving end of a tough parenting situation when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. You can do the opposite for your kids. You can be the one who is paying for their college and making sure that they don't have to take on a bunch of auto debt to buy a car. Yeah. You can make sure that your potential grandkids have their college paid for. You can set up your future family for the exact opposite situation. And that's the choice on the table right yeah. now. Like at the end of the day, you can also still go down the same path your mom did. No. And so <laughs> treat it like a guiding star because my biggest fear for your overall situation is distraction. Mm -hmm. That would be devastating yeah. where you make a lot of money. $9,800 a month is way above the average in the United yeah. States, for a, particularly for one salary. You're above the average for a household as well, mm -hmm. which means you're surrounded by a lot of people who are making great money and will not be responsible with that money. Over 40% of people making a six-figure salary report that they're living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Over 40%. That's insane. Yeah, that's wild. When someone says, I went to the Bahamas, it means I used a little bit of income I had and I ran up a bunch of credit yeah. card bills. Then I'm not in the rush to pay, right? When somebody says, oh, I just bought this Louis Vuitton bag. I'm so fancy. <laughs> what they're really saying is, there goes my kid's college tuition. <laughs> I'm not saving for that, even though I could. It's so common for people who make great money to be careless of money because they take it for granted. They don't realize there is an inevitable end to the money flow if you have to earn it yourself. Your mind eventually goes, your body eventually goes, or they both go. So I'm an ICU nurse. So I work in bedside nursing. So I mean, 12 hours a shift, we're on our feet. So it's, it's hard on you. Being an ICU nurse sounds stressful mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be doing that when you're 75 and 80? If you can? Heck no. No, no one does. You deserve to be able to retire on your own terms, to have the financial freedom you deserve, and you can do that. You make good money. Your bills give me a lot of hope in this situation in addition to your income. You spend less than $3,000 a month. I did have a question about a couple of the bills. What is your rent mortgage situation like? I see only $800 a month, which is fantastic. Yeah, so my boyfriend lives with me, so we split rent. Beautiful. Love that. That is so responsible. At $800 a month, that's one of the largest bills being cut down to a minuscule amount. Based on our conversations before the stream, I know one of your long-term goals is to buy a house. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Great. I love buying a house. I love taking money that could go to a landlord and be gone forever. I love taking that and putting it into something you're purchasing and buying that can hold some value. I don't think anybody should ever bank on their house necessarily appreciating in value. But if you're breaking even, that that's great, right? You effectively got to live somewhere for free. I do want to stress 
that while rent is a maximum a month you're going to pay, a mortgage is a minimum, right? Your property taxes can go up, things can break. And right now, if no money in your bank account, you're a good ways away from buying that house. Yeah. At a minimum, you want to get rid of the credit card debt. I would also say it would be best to get out of your debt situation and get to a place where you have a well-stocked emergency fund before buying a home. Because sure. it would really be devastating. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, buy a home, have the AC unit break, $10,000, and have to put on a credit card. Heck no, that'd be my worst nightmare. That is a worst nightmare scenario. And it's a surprisingly common one. Usually people have to spend 2% of their home's value in just repairs every year. I want your house to be a good goal to work mm -hmm. towards. I want you to understand that you're probably not in a position in the next year to be going after okay. it. You really need to get this debt situation down fast. Okay. A couple other bills stood out to me. Your grocery bill is $500. Because I mm -hmm. buy groceries for me and my boyfriend, so I'm buying for two. Okay. So it's probably at least 150 a week. Does he pay you any money for that? Or is that just your part of the bills? Uh, No, just my part of the bills. He would if I asked him to. I, probably, I guess I probably could ask him. I would consider if there are opportunities to save in your bills overall, even though they're low, consider taking them at least until the credit card debt is done. Um, because you're really not in a position to be generous, to be blunt. When it comes to finance, it's a lot like what they say on an airplane with the mask, the oxygen mask coming down. You take care of yourself first, and then you can help other people around you. Uh, and you are unfortunately are not in the position to help a lot of people right now, but you will be in the future. That's one of the benefits about becoming rich with investing, having a stock portfolio, getting out of debt. Uh, all of that is great because it enables you to help people you love and care yeah. about. A big financial mistake good people do is they try to help other people before they help themselves. Yeah, I do that. Which sounds so generous and kind, but that just means you're the next charity case. You're the next person other people have to be generous with. Yeah, you're right. You haven't really solved the problem. Yeah. You just made a new problem by solving another one. It evened out. Whereas if you take care of yourself and you get ahead, once you're ahead, you can help a tons of people, tons of people without creating new problems. You can actually be a solution. At the end of the day, I just want you to keep your monthly bills mm -hmm. low, but I don't want your quality of life falling apart because you're already living a pretty reasonable quality of life for somebody trying to get out yeah. of debt. Given that you make 9,800 a month, and you're spending less than 3000 mm -hmm. I think it's one of the high points in your overall situation. And it's one of the reasons I'm confident that you can be somebody who gets very wealthy in the long run. Because you spend very little, and a lot of your debt is tied to circumstance rather than bad decision making. Now, I did want to talk about the horses. I see them for $400 a month. Yeah, so I have three of them. Um, my plan, I don't need three of them. My plan is to... Um sell one when I get a little closer to buying a house so I can use that money for a down payment. So I'd only have two. Um, my expenses with them kind of vary every month because it just depends on if they need certain things done because they have to have their feet trimmed every six weeks. So obviously that's not a monthly thing. Um, horse feed is so expensive, just like everything else in the economy. Horse feed has tripled in cost. So that's about what $90 um, <clears throat> a week just on feed. And then I have we have to buy hay and it's just it's just different expenses. And how much could you get by selling a horse? Um probably fifteen to twenty thousand, maybe more, just depending on the ones that on the one that I sold. For many financial people, they would tell you sell the horses, get ahead, buy them in the future. I'm not gonna do that, mostly because I worry if you make that decision that you'll start developing bad financial habits. Because yeah. your financial habits on paper are good. You're just a victim of circumstance. You made tough decisions. You still have to pay the consequences. Life isn't mm -hmm. fair. But I don't want you developing bad habits where you sell the horses and then you're trying to cope. You start racking up credit card debt or just hating your situation to the point where you decide to focus on the short term instead of the long term situation. I know you want to sell potentially one horse as like a down payment. Have you considered selling one horse now because it would reduce the upkeep and you could throw that at your credit card debt and other debts and then saving up for a down payment yourself in the future? Yeah, I thought about it and I it's something that I could do. But what I worry about is if I did if I did list one for sale, I don't know how long they're going to how long it would take to sell them because you have to find the right buyer when you're asking that much money. If I was to sell one, I don't know um, if it would be that beneficial for me to do that, to put towards my credit card debt where I could do it myself if I paid my credit card debt off without having to sell a horse versus 
I mean, I understand what you're saying, but the benefit to doing it that way is one, you're getting rid of the upkeep cost. Additionally, if you're saving for a mortgage yourself, you're making interest in the bank. So you would actually have compound interest in your favor as opposed to against you. The sooner you make a dent in the debt situation, the less time compound interest is against yeah. you. I do believe though, if you didn't want to sell a horse, you can brute force your way through the situation as long as your income is as high as it is. As long as you're making basically $10,000 a month, you can forcibly just get through the situation. Okay. Nose to the grindstone, and you're going to have to be focused. Yeah. My big fear, and even when I say selling a horse, that fear is still there. My biggest fear is finally developing bad financial habits, finally getting distracted because your peers are going to be racking up credit card debt, going on mm -hmm. trips, buying nice clothing, and you have to endure the temptation to do the yeah. same. You can't live the luxurious lifestyle that your salary would normally let you do if you had no debt. So if you said, I don't want to sell the horses, it's going to be 400, 500 a month, fine. Uh, would selling the horses speed this up a lot? Yeah, yes. Sure. I understand that. But if it would take you back into debt within five years because you repurchase the horses, mm -hmm. uh, you start getting debt or you're really unhappy, like it's not yeah. worth it. Even though you make a great salary and you probably can be one of the wealthiest people I talk to, you also, I think, have the highest chance of failing. At the very start of this, I asked you what you would rate your financial situation. You said in negatives, I'd probably give you a three out of 10, which is lower than I've given people who make less than you because the chance of you going off track is high. At the end of the day, ultimately, what if you can freeze your spending for the next four years and just stick with what you currently have here, you'll be in great shape. But for you, I worry about that emotional aspect. You have the right temperament now, but can you keep it for four years? What do you think? Do you think you can keep it for four years? Yeah, I think I can do it. I just have to be super strict um, and I just have to buckle down. But um, I think that I can do it. I really hope so. I'm a believer in you. I'm cheering for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. You deserve to be wealthy. You deserve to be rich. And you have so many things going for you. But you have to buckle down. And last but not least, the final section we need to talk about, your investments in cash, nothing. That's correct. I would, by the end of this month, try to get $1,000 in there. Having $1,000 provides some liquidity for you. It means that when you need to pay an unexpected bill, you at least have a little bit of a buffer. Yeah. Additionally, as you're paying off credit cards, I want you to be closing them. I don't want them on the table anymore. But that also means you don't have the option of bailing out of credit card debt, which is a little risky. But by having $1,000, that risk is way less because you have something yeah. in the bank. Okay. If you wanted $2,000 in the bank, I would be understanding okay. as well. I think it's also okay to do. The more money you put in the bank, the less you have to throw out credit sure. cards. And so I don't want you to go too, too crazy there yet, at least until the credit card situation is done. With that said, having $1,000 there is something I would definitely try to do by the end of this month because I want you closing credit cards. I want to okay. be done. I want to be done too. By the end of this year, you can be done with the credit cards. And within four years, you can be done with all of your debt, making a stellar salary, building up a three to six month emergency fund, and starting to get your retirement accounts going. Start saving to be a multimillionaire by the time you retire, and you'll be in phenomenal shape. If you ever lose your way, you can always go to plaintalkmoney.com. There's the Plain Talk plan. It outlines how to get ahead. So you can always check it out. If you're wondering what I would say, just consult the plan. And by the end of this month, just this month, you're going to get rid of four credit cards. That's crazy to think about. Instead of being worried about the next email or bill, you're going to be sitting there Googling their FAQ of how do I close yeah. this now that I've paid the balance down? That's going to feel so good. It's going to feel amazing. I can't wait to uh, take it off the spreadsheet that you gave me. Oh, yeah. And keep using the spreadsheet. It's going to be so good. If you're watching it shrinking down and down and down. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. How do you feel right now? I feel better. I thought that my uncle actually a few weeks ago was talking to me about just filing bankruptcy. And I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I, I definitely feel like I'm drowning in this debt, but knowing that there's a plan and hearing you say I can have all my credit cards if I buckle down paid off in the next six months um, makes it feel really, really good. Elizabeth, thank you for coming on Finance Fixer. I wish you nothing but the best. And I know you can get this done. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you.